Hello again, back in my film studio, well, abandoned railway tunnel. In my last video, a few weeks ago, I showed you how to take fantastic photographs using light painting techniques. The results and detail are amazing. In this follow-on video, we're going to be a bit more creative and have a lot more fun. I'm going to show you how I take photographs in dark conditions like this using an electronic flash and a torch light, sometimes combining both of them. And then we're going to move on to the fun bit. We're going to take some amazing photographs using burning steel wool. Got to look at the camera setup first. I'm using same equipment as before. It's my A37 DSLR Sony camera. I've got a Sigma 10 x 20 zoom lens. I'll have it set on 10 milli most of the time. Got it mounted on a sturdy tripod, and I've got my cable. So a shutter release attached, so I can put different uh, exposures, time delays on. So first, we'll have a look at taking photographs with electronic flash and combining torchlight. So you need a decent torch. This is a. Night Star Panther. It's got a 1500 lumen beam and is ideal for lighting up a tunnel of this size. And then the other piece of uh, equipment you need is an electronic flash. This is a Sony F56 flash. I bought it on eBay second hand and it goes well with my camera and I've had some nice results with it. Now one of the advantages of taking a photograph with electronic flash is that you can be in that photograph. It's not so easy with light painting. And another good reason to have a person in a photograph, especially a tunnel like this, it gives a, a true perspective of what, how big the tunnel is. I'll just show you two photographs I've just taken with this flash. So this is a, a basic photograph taken using electronic flash. It's got me in, but as you can see, the light drops off soon to the left of the photograph. And I had to put the ISO up, up to 400, so the, the quality is affected. This photograph, uh, again taken with the electronic flash, has, my, has me in, and it does give an impression of the size of this place. But this massive tunnel really absorbs the light. I had to raise the ISO up to 800 and again the picture quality isn't so good. The flash in a tunnel like this is okay for close-ups and for getting yourself in, but its range is limited if the, the quality and detail of the picture is to be maintained. Another great use for the electronic flash is taking silhouettes. Now to take a, a silhouette, the secret 
is to have a really sharp silhouette. So what you'll need to do is pre-focus your camera first. Pick a position where you're going to stand, probably mark it with a rock or something like that. Then using your camera on autofocus and probably a torch to illuminate the spot you're going to stand. Pre-focus the camera and then switch the focus back to non-auto. So the camera focus is fixed on the spot you're going to stand. Now what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take several photographs using the electronic flash using torchlight and a combination of both to get various silhouettes things like that I'm then going to put them up on the computer screen put the settings on and we'll have a look at them and I'll explain precisely what I've done This is a basic uh, silhouette. It's taken by firing the flash off in front of me. I've got a 10 second delay to get in position and then I set an exposure of 5 seconds. That gave me plenty of time to fire the flash off and get a sharp image, a sharp silhouette of myself. To get a, a bright image in front of me, I raise the ISO up, up to 1600. A combination of flash and torchlight in this photo. 10 second exposure. The flash immediately freezes my image. And then again, I stay perfectly still and the 10 seconds exposure exposes the torch beam to give a good effect. This photo is one of my favourite silhouette methods. It's obtained by using torch lighting from. Again, 10 seconds to get in position, 5 second, expe five second exposure used, but you must stay perfectly still to get a sharp image. Similar settings used here, but the flash is fired in front of me against a wall to give a nice clear silhouette. And then the long, longer 10 second exposure exposes the torch beam again to give a, a good effect on the torch light. Combination of flash and torchlight. 10 second exposure, the flash immediately freezes my image, gives a good silhouette. Another example here with the flash being fired at the side of me to give a nice clear silhouette. Similar photo here, again, 10 seconds game position, I've left a 10 second exposure for this one, put my flash on half power, and I fired it off twice, one at a side of me and one at the other side, and it gives a, a more coverage of bright light, giving a, a better silhouette in a way. As you can see, the possibilities are endless. You can take different exposures, point the flash in different directions. It's just a matter of experimenting. I've saved the best till last. Burning steel wool photography provides some amazing results. What you will need, some steel wool. This is grey 000. 
very fine, burns easily. But you can experiment with other grades. A kitchen whisk, easily obtainable, very cheap. I've got a length of chain, piece of wire would do. I've got about eight foot. That will allow me to spin this round. The wire wool. You pack the whisk full of wire wool. So you need to loosen the wire wool up a bit so it's a bit more fluffy. So yeah. I might actually put a bit more in this. This is for demonstration purposes. So you get your whisk packed full of wire wool. The only other item you need is a lighter or you can actually use a 9 volt battery. So what you do, you get in position, you light the wire wall and then you spin it round and then you photograph it on a long exposure and it gives amazing results. A word of warning, you are playing with fire here. If you don't have proper protective clothing and eye protection, you will get horribly burnt, blinded, even worse. So take great care. And don't go and try it in a dry uh, building or some dry wooded area. You will set fire to it and get into an awful lot of trouble. And do not try and blame me. So that's the warning. Now let's get on and have some fun. We'll go through the settings I've put on the camera now. I've pre-focused it on the spot where I'm going to stand, so it's back to manual focus. The white balance I've put on daylight. I'm wanting the, in a way, the, the orange of the burning steel wool to show up. That's the reason I've put it on daylight. If it had been on an unusual uh, Kelvin setting, it would have shown up white. The aperture, you can set that f8 to f22, quite a big range. I've actually set this for f13, we'll see how it goes. I've given myself a 20 second delay for me to get in position. That's 10 seconds on the camera, 10 seconds on my uh, remote shutter release. And then the exposure time I've set for 25 seconds. So that should give a, a decent uh, exposure while I spin the, the steel wall. So we'll get ready to take a picture now. So we're ready to take this first picture. I've got uh, 10 seconds delay on the camera, 10 seconds on my timer. So it'll give me 20 se seconds to get in position. I'm leaving the floodlight on, it might add to the picture. So that's counting down, game position. I'm going to wait for the camera last 10 seconds. 10 seconds to go. Why roll it? It's just match of spinning it. And this will create a fantastic picture. So that's 25 cent exposure on that one. We'll see what that one works out like. I'm gonna take about half a dozen more now, and then we'll, we'll put them on the computer screen. I'll put all the settings on, and we'll have a look at them, see what the results are like.
just a matter of experimenting with the settings. But I've used my 10 millimeter lens each time. Aperture f10 to around f13. ISO set to 100 each time. And then the exposure. I suppose I've varied it between about 15 and 30 seconds. And they've all given acceptable pictures. That burning steel wall certainly gave some impressive photographs. It's amazing what fun you can have in a dark tunnel like this with a camera, a torch and a few bits and bobs. The hardest part of this video has been the actual videoing side of it. Next to my camera I've got an LED floodlight mounted. If I turn it up and the light hits my face it overexposes it. If I turn it down well then I've no background and there's no depth to the picture at all. So what I've ended up doing here I've got a torch either side of me shining onto the brickwork behind me to try and give the the video a bit of depth to it but I do find uh, videoing in a dark area like this very difficult I haven't quite mastered it yet that's probably why on all my exploring videos I tend to put a still photograph like we've taken perhaps with light painting or with flash and then I put audio over the top of it I find it produces a lot clearer, a lot better video to me than having a, a bit of video and light flashing all over and you can't actually see a lot at the end of the day. I must admit I, I will do a full explore of this tunnel. There's such a lot of history, such a lot to tell you about it. I'll probably put that on uh, early in the new year. So I hope this has given you sort of an insight into the types of photographs that I take and how I take them in a dark area like this using flashes, torchlight and a combination of both. So I hope you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching and thank you, a big thank you for looking at all my videos over this past year. I do appreciate your comments. So if I could wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and I'll see you in the new year. Thanks for watching. Bye then.